Hello. Welcome back to Alan Wake 2. Let's... let's do this. Don't like that it handed me a gun. That gives me concern. I mean, who is this gonna be? Thomas Zane, Alan Wake, me? Hello? It's me again. Of course. You need to go to the statue of Parliament Tower Plaza. To make your ending come true, you will need what's inside the shoebox there. The ending? A shoebox? Who is this? Wow, it's literally going back to the place where we left it. Seriously? If I were to take a guess at where you were... Hey. Agent Anderson. How long have you been here? Is that really you? Sorry, this place likes to play tricks. Sheriff Breaker? What happened to you? How did you end up in the dark place? I was brought here. Snatched away from the morgue by a man named Orlin Dorr. Been trying to piece it together for... Well, it feels like a long time now. I need to get to Parliament Tower Plaza. Do you have any idea where it is? This place, it's like trying to find your way around in a dream. I've been trying to map it, but it keeps looping, shifting. Like, there are many versions stacked on top of each other. There is a page. It describes Dor finding his way through this place. I tried to follow the steps, but... No luck. That sucks. Can I see that page, Tim? Of course. In fact, it's the page I tried to give you back in the morgue in Bright Falls. Oh. Huh. Now that I think about it, maybe Dor brought me here to keep you from reading it. Here. <laughs> Optimistic. I'm going to keep looking for Dor. The closer I get, the closer I feel to waking up. I need to find the man behind the curtain. Warland Dor walked across the rain slick tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. He stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there. He stepped through, willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza. I know what I need to do. The door to Parliament Tower Plaza was at the construction yard. Interesting. Am I able to read that? Warland Dor walked across the rain slick tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. The rain didn't seem to touch him. He sensed his steps were being observed, documented into the story. He allowed it, this one time for this one reason, to be passed on by his unwilling disciple to read at the right time. The ocean that was the dark place took the shape of New York City, drawn for the mind of Alan Wake. In part for the writer to navigate his prison, in part to torment him as he struggled to find his way out. Dor was not bound by the rules as Wake was. He came and went as he pleased. For now, Dor entertained the writer's fantasy, for a purpose known only to him. At the edge of the plaza, he stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there, another part of Wake's fiction. He stepped through. Willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza. Okay. Very strange. Uh, let's not spend a lot of time in here. Does Warlin have way more power here than we thought? I mean, I guess I already thought he was pretty powerful. He's able to just kidnap Breaker. Because he was doing the story out of order, the silly boy. Hmm. 
Following a typical nightmare pattern, I was late, desperately trying to reach my destination. A lighthouse. For some urgent reason I couldn't remember. I've been driving too fast down a coastal road to get there. What is about to happen? Oh god. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Let's go out the service exit. Let's stock up on as much as possible, apparently. Oh, yeah, my charm breast, it's empty, too. I unlocked a whole extra slap for nothing. I made it. I need to get up to the street and find that statue. It will take absolutely everything. Are we just going to loop through this place over and over? Again, giving, like, heavy ending of control vibes. They're giving me maybe too much stuff. I am now more concerned. Enough already. We already got past those demons. This is a good sign. I have a feeling I shouldn't trust you. I'm lost in the One of these I probably can't trust. There's the shoebox. Oh, there it is. I was looking too far down. The clicker. Oh! And some kind of bullet. Shining with light. How did the clicker get here from Washington? Hell yeah. Your photographs made real somehow. May we please load that into my gun? Just gonna make a run for it. Maybe there's something for us in her studio. Or not. You're doing weird shit. Okay. More of them. I have... So much battery power. This is cathartic. What are we doing? What are we doing? Escape the dark place. Hmm. <laughs> Chance it's in Warland's studio. <laughs> the hotel? Hmm, that doesn't seem open. Breaker, do you still exist? No. I just want revenge for all those guys never being able to be beaten. Nothing here. I got all those guys back. Escape the dark place is a very vague goal, it seems. Hello! A lot of misses. Don't charge up an attack. Answer the phone. Scoozy. Just had to murder enough people. Obviously. Any tips, Alice? Yes? Hello. Uh, you don't know me, but you need to listen. Hold on. How did you know the clicker would be there? This is important. Alan's lost. He doesn't have the ending. He needs your help to finish the story. How am I supposed to help him from here? 
Come on, Alice. Okay. I'm in the dark place. Wake is in Washington. I could talk to him in overlaps before. My mind place is more powerful than I ever knew. I can try to contact him. Sorry, I'm going to the mind place, and I'm not tolerating your existence while I'm in there. Okay. Let's be quick. Ring, ring. Alan. We need to talk about the ending. Saga. What is this? My mind place. I've reached out to you like this before. But I understand more about it now. You see a visions too. I used to think they were ideas, inspiration, but they're real. Just like this now. I try to use them to make the story come true. So this is coming from both of us. Maybe that's how we could communicate in the overlaps. We could use this to stop Scratch. First, I need the ending. Shouldn't have hung up so soon. Is there a problem, Mr. Writer? So there's a problem with the ending? I don't have the ending. It has to be perfect, but I don't have time to figure it out. I don't know what to do. Fuck. I'm so sorry. This whole thing is a fucking mess. I agree, but we can still figure this out. And what exactly does perfect mean? The elements of the ending need to come from the story's pre-existing parts. To make matters worse, this is a horror story. Horror story? You don't need to tell me this is a horror story. Right. The ending has to fit the genre if it's going to work. In a horror story, they're only victims and monsters. There must be a way to bring a hero into the story. If there is a hero, they will ultimately pay a heavy price. Oh, there's a lot here. Pre-existing parts. So the ending has to be earned. Set up by the story. You can't build a case without supporting evidence. That's the only way to make it stick. Good way to make it relatable. Logan and Casey must survive. This feels like what we would have said to him when he was in the writer's room in the real world. I, maybe these two places are overlapping just as before? I can't let the horror story take Logan and Casey. They were dragged into this. They need to survive. Non-negotiable. Not just them. We need to try to save everyone. I have an idea how to help Casey. He's a real person who I twisted into a character. He isn't my creation, so he isn't a suitable host for the Dark Presence. I can write that into the ending to drive that fucking thing out of him. That's an interesting idea. He's Thomas Zane's creation. Well, if the ending has to fit the story, this is how I see it. Return is a story about a story that comes true. And I'm a character in the story. Not just a character. The hero. Okay, a hero. <laughs> in any case, I've been through hell to be here. And this is my life. It feels earned to me that I rise above the story and be there to create the ending. Yes. That's what we're doing. Here, now. We're figuring out the ending I need to write. This is a very meta story. This is not your ending. This isn't Scratch's ending. But this isn't your ending either. This is our ending. You aren't the only one deciding these things anymore. You're right. I can't do this alone. Every time I write, things only get worse. You beat this thing back in 2010, Alan. And here you are doing the same again. You're a hero, too. We're in this together. Then let's bring it home. I need a big old pile of flare guns. 
price must be paid. The ending will have to be dark, no matter what. The more people we save, the greater the cost, and the hero must pay the price. One of the heroes. The scales always need to balance. <sighs> Fuck it. Let's go with this. Are you sure? There's no time for anything better. Scratch could be here any second. Then that's our ending. I have the clicker. I'll find a way to get it to you. And I'll get the pages down. See you on the other side. I am loving this ending. <laughs> oh my god. I need to retrace my steps back to Caldera Street Plaza. I arrived in the dark place through the fountain. Maybe I can leave that way too. Don't advance on me like this then. Why are they all advancing like this? Okay. Enter the fountain and return to the plaza through the subway station. Caldera Plaza is back through the subway. I have to hurry. Please don't do anything funky on me, like take me to the hotel. Hey boys. Nope, not fast enough. How many of you are real? You're real. I don't know what's up with you. I don't know if you're a glitch. You're dead though, so it's fine. How did we get here? Yoink. Let's just have a pill real quick. Right. Strange place. In we go. Hello. Alan? Saga. I finished it. The ending we talked about. I have the clicker. And the bullet of light. Let's do this. By the way, we have a bullet of light now. I have to be the one to do it. I feel like I've always been on this journey. Okay. It must end here. This darkness. What lies under the surface now shifts. A play of shadows catching my eye, thrusting my face into the water. He's here. It's shockingly cold. Past the mirror of the surface. And I will see. I see? The end. Scratch. Now. A white searing light of truth that for a flash pierces the shadows and reveals the hidden horror. And in that moment of silence, the whispered message finally heard. Come on, you What if there's nothing waiting to be revealed? The play of shadows fill us all subterfuge to get our price of admission. Darkness not as a monster, but as emptiness. We're none the wiser. No answers, no truths. The hero turns to look inside, is destroyed by what he sees, and is redeemed. Saga said we're both heroes. I'll pay that price. So will she. We are here to kill the monster. I pray nothing comes after this. Nothing but sleep. This is how we win. Is it too easy? What if this is still the dark place? Another dream to wake up from, always coming back to the beginning. The memory of what came before burned away by this terrible realization. Maybe it's a mercy, forgetting. To know nothing when we loop around, back to the... Over. 
bilirsin. How dare you, game? How absolutely dare you? Hey there, welcome to a different audio recording. For anyone new here, uh, I don't like cutting out the credits from these playthroughs, but I still want to put something here for anyone that sticks around anyway. Uh, and I recommend sticking around, at least for a bit. There's a mid credit scene coming up, so... You are now hostage until then, ha ha ha. I won't tell you when it's coming, but it's coming. But first, the housekeeping. Thank you so much for watching. I really love this game, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please leave a like on the video and all the other videos. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I have playlists with all my previous playthroughs, including the first Alan Wake and Control. Um, and also Alan Wake's American Nightmare. And also Alan Wake's American Nightmare. Like, if you're really bored and want to watch something, you could watch that one if you want, I guess. Also, share the videos with anyone who might like watching this kind of thing. Spreading the word is the best way to help the channel. But now let's talk about Alan Wake 2. I really wanted to play this after enjoying Control, but I decided to play the other two games first. So I'm pretty confident in saying that this is the best one of the three. Um, I'm not sure if I'd say it's better than Control, they both satisfy different itches, Control being more of an action game, while this is more survival horror. So I will hear no debate on which is better, both of them are fantastic. Let's get the comparison to American Nightmare out of the way first. I didn't particularly like that game, it was more combat heavy and less story focused. The combat is more action-y rather than the deliberate combat of Alan Wake 2. And the more I compare them in my mind while I'm writing this, the less favorably I'm thinking of American Nightmare. Should I stop talking about American Nightmare? I think I'm going to come back to it later when I want to talk about the story, because th there are some interesting ideas there. Maybe just one. Maybe just one interesting idea there. But the best comparison is between the first and second games. Technically third? Nope, uh, nope, we're leaving American Nightmare out of this for now. Both are horror games, but after playing through two, the first one almost seems laughable to call a horror game? Everything the first game did, the second game took and did better. While both Alan and Saga have combat in their gameplay, Saga's more closely matches the combat of the first game. I will say, I liked that the first game reset your ammunition supplies between levels. It ensured that you never got too powerful, and in some cases actually made you weaker. Some levels just didn't give you a gun to start with, so you'd feel the need to play cautiously but pretty much every level ended with you being oversupplied and feeling like you could take on anything. Two does a great job at finding the balance. Ammo is limited, but you do have more options for dealing with enemies. They are spawning in fewer numbers, so each fight is allowed to be more intense. Also, the flashlight not recharging is a great removal. Batteries are like the most important resource and give you another thing to really worry about, but like in a good way. Being uncomfortable in a game like this is a good thing. I think that covers all the important combat stuff I wanted to talk about. I don't really think the combat is the real pull for a game like this. It's all about the story. It's got some fun twists, we got fun callbacks to the previous games. Actually, I think those are worth highlighting. Like I said earlier, I was worried about not playing the previous games before hopping into this one, but I don't think that would have been much of an issue. The writers were aware that it's been 13 years since the previous game, so anything that is returning in this game doesn't actually require knowledge of the previous games. Hey, it's Miles with a third voiceover here. Just interrupting because the mid credit scene is about to play. Here it is. This part is just for you. After the haunting started, I got in touch with an organization that was still looking into what happened in Bright Falls. I went to their offices and... something happened there. After I got home, I could suddenly remember everything. I remembered being trapped inside that lake. That dark, 
ocean with with echoes of myself my 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 fears my photos inside a dark tide of, of madness the same events and images looping again and again and then i saw a light your light you dove in just as i swam out you never drowned and you're still there reaching out that is what the haunting is i can see you because i've been there too i chose to come back to the dark place that is why i put on this exhibition I had to mislead you so that I could get you to where you needed to be. The only way out of your loop is destruction or ascension, light or dark. And we've covered the destruction part many times over. And we're getting to the ascension bit by bit. Time means nothing here. You'll still need to go through the loop. But I will keep showing you the images you need to see the light you need to see until you're ready. Ellen, I think we're getting close. It's not a loop. It's a spiral. Ooh, freaky. And a controller reference. Always fun. Anyway, uh, I don't know where in my monologue I cut myself off, so um, I'm just going to say something here like like an NPC would when you cut them off in a conversation. Uh, something like, what was I saying again? Oh, right. Let's see, who returns in this game? We got Nightingale, Rose, the Anderson Brothers, Cynthia. I'm still mad that there was no Barry in this game. Uh, at least physically. His fingerprints are throughout, at least. But you don't have to know anything about these characters from the previous game to know what they're up to in this one. Though I suppose Cynthia's story is a little bit sadder if you know her and her relation to Tom. So I'm going to go out book report here and talk about the main theme of the game, which is creativity. Pretty much what the entire game is about. Alan Wake finds great success writing Alex Casey novels, but eventually gets tired of the character, so he kills him off. But now he has all this recognition on his name and pressure for his next book to be just as successful. That leads to writer's block, and that leads to, literally and figuratively, a dark place. Or the dark place. It's kind of hard to pin down an exact metaphor or a representation of the dark place or scratch. It kind of just seems to represent the idea of negativity in all its forms. The scene that highlights this best in my mind is Saga's final scene in her mind place. I love this whole sequence. It's a perfect blending of storytelling with game mechanics. And that's something I think a lot of games struggle with, especially games of this scale. Most of the times in games you get your gameplay with sort of story served on the side. It's rare that it feels like the use of the game mechanics is actually affecting the story. So gameplay-wise, the case board is essentially just a way to keep all the different story threads coherent for the player. But it also represents how Saga is thinking through and solving the cases. But the final scene takes that mechanic and makes it about her. Instead of clues about the case, it's the dark thoughts about how she's failing everyone around her. It's the dark presence representing all these negative thoughts she has and portraying them as notes on her board. It lays out all these doubts and worries that she has, and then gives all the negative thoughts and reasoning that she has to, like, justify them. And then, she's using all the objects that she has in her room to counteract those thoughts. The objects that have just been there the entire time. It's so smart and it's so good, just these things that just seem like nice little character pieces are, like, essential from saving her <laughs> from the final villain. And the Dark Presence is obscuring them at first, furthering the metaphor of it being this force of negativity, shutting out the positive thoughts. It is an excellent scene. And while we're talking about the mind place, we need to talk about the writer's room as well. It is a much better exploration of the premise of this series. In the first game, you just found pages and the action on them would either have already happened or is still to come. 
It feels less like you're writing yourself out of the situation and more like somebody accidentally sent you the plot breakdown. But in this game, we're actually rewriting scenes, finding inspirations within those scenes to push the story forward. And we're not just getting cosmetic or gameplay changes to these scenes. It's like an actual progression of the story being written around you. It's probably the Ocean View Hotel that handles this best out of the three locations. As we go from preparing the hotel for the show, setting up rehearsals, and then having Scratch finally showing up and ruining everything. It's like we're actually telling a story here. Maybe it works better because it feels like one big location where we can take in all the story changes as it progresses. Meanwhile, the subway feels more linear. Less like you're progressing the story in the space and more like you're just doing the things that move you through that space. But even in these cases, it feels like you're progressing the levels by progressing the story you're writing. You're not just changing the scene. You're literally opening the way forward to future scenes. Let's get back to the role of creativity in the game. The game represents the act of creating and creativity in many different ways. There's professionally with Alan Wake in his books. Rose writes her fan fiction simply because she enjoys it or possibly thinks that it could come true, similar to Alan's writing. And it's not just writing that's explored in this game. We've got a short film, Uten U, and the song by the same name. Uh, there's the incredible musical sequence in there, The Heralds of Darkness, which is maybe the only direct reference to American Nightmare in this game. I remember that game mentioning the Champion of Light and the Herald of Darkness, and those are lyrics in the chorus of the musical. So, good for you, American Nightmare. Let's see, we have the nursery rhymes from the FBC and their little paper dolls. We even have art done simply for aesthetics. Mandy May making the knitwear pendants for the lunchboxes. However, I think it's Alice that might have the most interesting intersection between creativity and the dark presence. The first game, she was pretty boring. She was just the Princess Peach of the story. So I'm glad she got more depth and story in this one. And... We maybe possibly have American Nightmare to thank for this. This is so weird. I'm saying nice things about American Nightmare. I'm not sure how much of that game is canon, but it explored Alice post disappearance of Alan. She got into filmmaking. The film she made is used as a weapon to defeat Scratch. Okay, so maybe that game is not really that canon if he's still showing up. But we do get to keep the filmmaking aspect of her character. I. Suppose it's technically a combination of things. Her apartment is now an exhibition space, not merely a gallery, but like an interactive exhibit as well. Her photography is on display, and she has her video diaries documenting her experience. We even see like tape marks on the floor and stuff, sort of figuring out how to guide the audience through there. So that that's just another medium that this game is exploring. For her, I think the Dark Presence represents obsession. She dives headfirst into the work she's doing and lets it consume her. She pushes herself further and is haunted by Scratch more and more, until she hits her breaking point. Though I am glad to see that that might not be what actually happened. But enough about themes and metaphor. Both Control and Alan Wake 2 have pulled off this really neat trick with both of their stories. They are packed full with mysteries that we want answered. But in both of these games, they've answered just enough of those mysteries and questions to satisfy us, but still leave us with so many questions. It's great for sequel hooks, but it's also leaving us these holes in the story that maintain that mystique that make them so fun and appealing to think about. For example, Saga's story is pretty much completely wrapped up. The ending did leave it vague on whether Logan was safe or not, but all parts of this point to Logan being safe. Alan made his sacrifice so that Saga and her family could be safe. We know all about the cult of the tree, and we know all about the ritualistic murders. And all of this is enough to give us a satisfying story and ending. But there is still so much more. Who is Warlandor? Who is Ati? Is the Dark Presence defeated or just weakened? How will Alan finally escape? Where did this light bullet come from? What is the spiral? <laughs> There's still so much to explore, and I am excited to see what they do next. I mean, it's probably Control 2 next, but maybe we'll get some crossover in there. With Ati in the mix, we're bound to get answers for both games. Anyway, I think that about 
covers up the big points I wanted to unfurl from my brain about this game. Thank you again for watching, and double thank you if you've listened to all this. We'll be switching back to the me that was recording the video shortly. I'm sure he did a nice outro and didn't mess it up this time. Probably said we're going to be playing the DLC next, because that's what we're doing. I'll say it here, because I don't actually remember what I said. Cool. Who knows. Thank you again, and back to the end of the game. Journey through the night continues. I mean, yeah, it did feel a bit of a vague ending there. The final draft? What is this? Is this a script writing software? Oh god. Extremely challenging combat, methodical use of items, a strong understanding of game mechanics is necessary for survival. No thanks. God, even normal had challenging combat. I bet Nightmare has more pages, just like the first one. That's why it's called Final Draft. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and for sitting through the credits. Uh, I'm sure I, I wrote something very... Saw a lot of cool stuff that I said during those credits. And hopefully I didn't make fun of me while I did that. Anyway, yes, thank you so much for watching again. We'll be back... Wednesday, I think, to play... Th to keep going through the DLC, because we technically already played one of them. Uh, so until next episode on Wednesday, I don't even know what episode I'm recording for anymore. Anyway, until then, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>